Hi guys, Asmo here and in this video I want to talk a little bit about the Scourge mechanic and builds, my recommended build starters, what can we tell about build starters and in general builds in 3.16 uh, so far before having the POB update and also which kinds of builds will do well in the league mechanic itself. So from what we know about the Scourge mechanic you're going to need a build that is able to take some punishment, basically you're going to have to clear the map and uh, or at least portion of the map until you fill your blood crucible then you click your button and then you're transported into the nightmare realm and you start killing monsters they surround you immediately uh, which means you don't want something that needs to kite you need to you need to play a build that can be hit and can take a hit as well if you want to do well with this league mechanic because likely you're going to be overrun by monsters especially considering that delirium is applying to this uh, scourge around the nightmare or whatever is it's called uh, and you're gonna have a lot of monsters there it's gonna be packed with monsters and then the longer you stay in it the more damage you take there's a stacking debuff on you that stacks up to i think like 30 times uh, and that makes you take increased damage from monsters which means you want something that will give you decent mitigation and avoidance so i wrote a quick list of kind of what you need to make sure that your build has if you want to do well with the scourge mechanic of course you might just want to skip the mechanic and just go for bossing make a bunch of currency that way there are all kinds of different ways you can start the league you don't have to play necessarily the same thing as everybody else but if you want to do well with the scourge mechanic you're interested in that and since it's a scourge rig then most people will be interested in that here's what you want you want a tanky character uh, that is tanky versus a lot of monsters. This means, for example, that armor is suddenly pretty good because not only armor was buffed, but also armor in general is better against a lot of small hits than, for example, against like one big hit. Versus one big hit, armor is not as good. Uh, but you also want evasion, right? Because you don't want to like get hit by every single thing, right? So they actually are both going to be really, really good. So if you can get a combination of armor and evasion, that's gonna be really, really strong versus the scourge mechanic uh, it's gonna be probably stronger than something like a combination of armor and energy shield or evasion and energy shield and so on because energy shield is usually better for bosses where you can take a hit your large uh, your large pool of energy shield uh, absorbs that and then you get to move away not take damage for a couple of seconds and then it starts recovering right you get the recovery of the energy shield and you can abuse that on bosses mostly uh, otherwise you need to have like a bunch of evasion so evasion energy shield and armor energy shield are both gonna be good but i think the combination of armor and evasion is like the, the main thing that's gonna keep you most tanky um other other another reason why armor is really good is because you can also uh, have the vms which is val molten shell which has been actually buffed a little bit in this patch and it's gonna allow you to be more tanky for that last uh, scourge transport transportation transformation like when you're going in for that second or third time after you already have the debuff stacked to the max in order to not take so much damage you can activate vms and it's gonna tank a little bit from from the damage that you're gonna be taking so it's nice to have like a solid defensive cooldown that's gonna be good on top of like a solid ehp pool you want to have a decent uh, effective hp pool so that's when it comes to the defenses when it comes to the offenses you want to have good aoe coverage because the monsters are gonna be all around you so something like i don't know like ek nova things like something that hits all around you something like cast on crit for example these types of builds are gonna be pretty good uh, you want to have a strong clear speed so something like contagion mechanics so ed contagion is going to be pretty good in it proliferation or like ignite proliferation something like that or just having high attack and cast speed combined with like a lot of projectiles or a lot of aoe and of course as always you want to have good movement speed so this is pretty much focusing on the clear speed and you also would like to have just enough single targets so that you can kill awakener so one of the reasons why i for example don't play something like an ek on a league start is because ek has very hard time killing conquerors and the awakener you need to do some crazy shenanigans in order to do that potentially it could work with tornado now so maybe but we'll have to practice that i wouldn't risk a league starting with that but you want to focus on the clear speed and the aoe and the coverage that your build has and then the single target is definitely secondary it's not that important to be able to to kill all the bosses and do it very quickly this is something that you want to do probably on your second character that you're going to focus on unless you are specifically starting to kill bosses at the league start so with these requirements 
one of the best builds for a league start in my opinion is going to be the toxic rain champion Toxic Rain can be played as a trickster, as a raider, as a champion. I think champion is going to be very, very strong because of the buffs to the determination aura, to grace aura, uh, basically just buff to all around evasion and armor is so powerful for champion. It still keeps the fortify effect. So it's going to be very, very tanky. And the POBs still say that you can do like four or five million single target damage on pretty budget gear uh, so it's going to be very very strong you can also abuse things like the soul thirst for crazy attack speed if you're going to be stacking the duration on your flasks with the new flask changes this is an extremely good build and i'm probably going to release like a quick video also on how to level that character because it's a little bit tricky you need to do like a little transition uh, but if you can start with toxic rain champion i'm sure it's going to do very very well in the scourge mechanic another thing you can start with from the list of recommended starters would be ed contagion either trickster or occultist both are very good both are gonna do very well in the league mechanic uh, and both actually are gonna have access to uh, the ghost shrouds right so it's gonna be basically a personal choice whichever one you prefer I think Trickster is going to have a little bit of a better single target damage because you're going to have frenzy charges on a single target and power charges on a single target which might just increase your spell damage if you're using some mechanics with that. Uh, basically we are now going to be picking Swift Killer on uh, Trickster which gives us a little bit more damage uh, and on the occultist you have the benefit of extra aoe which definitely helps your clear you could potentially go for explode but normally ed contagion doesn't go for explode uh, but it is still very very solid option so either trickster or occultist depending on your personal preference both are gonna be super easy to level um, and both toxic rain and ed contagion have been buffed this league because we have more damage over time multipliers uh, accessible on the tree uh, just more damage over time nodes on tree uh, we're gonna have more damage over time uh, accessibility for example by non-influenced amulets now allowing you to roll a dot multi on them uh, and of course the jewels having now up to maximum i think eight percent dot multi instead of four so this is really really nice buff for uh, these skills so i definitely recommend starting with one of those physical minion summoner that's the next one minions are gonna be just as strong as before pretty much if you're going for the physical version of the bills which means like for example you can start with zombie skeletons and give them impale you can have like support specters with them uh, you can later swap to something like impale uh, skeleton archers with some ranged um, range specters that are basically gonna just like spam with bows and impale the new gloves that have been released that allow you to basically take credit for the kills happening around you would allow you to also give these minions explode crazy stuff so definitely summoners are gonna be still very strong uh, skeleton mages are are also pretty good early on and it's very nice for clear uh, so for the scourge mechanic skeleton mages are probably gonna be still pretty good uh, next spectral shield throw a bleed corrupting fever so corrupting fever is something that a lot of people are going to be playing and there are a lot of different options uh, many people are thinking that gladiator is going to be the way to do it i don't personally think gladiator is the way to do it uh, because the main thing you get from the gladiator is you get some speed but you get that from other ascendancies as well um, you mainly get something uh basically from the explode right you get the explode on the bleed which basically can come from gloves if you get hemophilia gloves on any other character you get the same benefit from the explode and everything else these other ascendancies have better if you want to be uh, a lot more tanky you play with champion if you want to be a little bit faster you play with trickster and if you want to do more damage you play with dead eye dead eye basically has the greatest clear of all of those and probably the best single target damage as well with the marks with the bleed rapture stacking with crimson dance it's a very very nice um it's a very very nice build and it's gonna scale into the late game as well it might be uh, slightly slower to get off the ground than for example something like uh, toxic rain or ed contagion or physical minions but it's still gonna be pretty solid and in the beginning you scale both sst bleed and the corrupting fever and later you can switch to just completely focusing on the corrupting fever 
cult.occultist. Another build that's gonna be pretty nice to start while leveling, you're gonna have very nice damage because the base damage has been buffed, there is more access to damage over time nodes on the tree, however the end game scaling uh, might be a little bit harder to figure out, we still are not sure how it's gonna look exactly because we need to see the new uh, path of building uh, tree in order to make the builds and see the exact numbers, however just doing the leveling is definitely gonna be nice and it seems like it's just like a good well rounded skill that you can potentially play. And then we've got VDDD Spellslinger, different Spellslinger builds uh, are definitely going to be popular, it's a one button build mainly and a lot of people are gonna be trying to uh, do something with VDDD either with like Necromancer or Assassin, uh, I haven't personally played much of it so I can't give you any like specific recommendations for who has the good build but a lot of people are recommending that and it seems like it's gonna be one of the popular starters as well. And then we've got Armageddon Brand with either Assassin or Elementalist because right now you don't actually need to focus on the Ignite version, you just focus on the Hit version. The Hit version has been buffed, they nerfed slightly the activation speed uh, but there is higher base damage, higher damage effectiveness uh, and an extra modifier basically that increases your hit damage so Armageddon Brand with a hit focused build is definitely going to be a very comfy starter either Assassin or Elementalist, I guess Assassin and Elementalist, they both have pretty good single target damage and uh, they're both pretty fast, I think Elementalist might be a little bit more versatile because then you can also go for Ignite version if that scales any better in the end game. And then if you want to start with a character that will be bossing then I definitely recommend um, either the seismic trap with exsanguinate for clear but you have to keep in mind that cold iron point which is the plus three to level of physical spells dagger that you would normally want to dual wield uh, as a starting version of this build is going to be very expensive it's gonna be like day one it's gonna be a few exalts to buy that so it's gonna be very very hard to get cold iron points early on so you have to account for that but even without cold iron points it's gonna be a pretty good build uh, definitely recommend that for bossing or you can also stick with the ice trap which is always really really strong uh, for bossing it's very nice very comfy and um, it has the added security of freezing the monsters uh, i enjoyed my ice trap start last league and it's still gonna be decent uh, and then general scry which is another very very much single target focused build for bossing that can get off the ground with a very limited budget Personally, uh, I'm gonna probably try to start with Toxic Rain Champ out of those uh, and then there are some other builds that definitely are gonna be good. So in terms of more aspirational content or builds that maybe you wanna play as your second character that want a little bit more investment or actually with some of these builds a lot of investment, there's definitely gonna be a lot of stacking. This is gonna be int stacking, there's gonna be strength stacking, there's gonna be int plus strength stacking for example on Inquisitor with like the energy blades and then accuracy stacking which also is combined with strength stacking on a juggernaut. So a lot of different stacking builds are going to be played. Uh, all of these, all of the above can pretty much work with the energy blade because all of them allow you to stack a large amount of energy shield which can also be used for the damage on the energy blade. So this is basically, it, it just exponentially scales with investment because you're investing both in your defense and offense potentially depending on how it exactly works out in practice. Definitely not something you want to play in hardcore because you like spend your energy shield but in softcore potentially you could do that and you could also do that with uh, with the new skill that like uh, puts you back in time for seconds to recover your energy shield after spending it. Then we've got also Poisonous Concoction, uh, which I think it might be also a good starter, but it's always risky to start with the new skills depending on like what the numbers look like early on. It definitely has to be tried in practice first, but it looks like one of the strongest of the new skills. Like actually both Energy Blade and the Poisonous Concoction look extremely strong. If you look at the uh, damage on these, it's really, really good. You get, um, you get added Chaos damage equal to 3% of Flask recovery amount, and there's a lot of ways of increasing the Flask recovery uh, amount, and it's going to be very, very strong especially considering the note that says here plus six percent to critical strike chance this uh, can be abused because a poisonous concoction is an unarmed attack it's a projectile one but it's unarmed attack which means you could potentially use a rickwald's curse uh, you get plus seven percent to unarmed attack critical strike chance and then you can also use claw nodes which are very good for poison with ailments damage over time so you could get plus six plus seven and then also if you look at the assassin uh, with poison you get plus two percent and here plus 1.5 percent critical strike chance so basically that puts you 
at 16.5% base critical strike chance. It's absolutely insane. You can, you can basically start as a base with 0% increased crit, you start with like 16.5% increased, uh, sorry, just base critical strike chance. You can increase that with gloves. Uh, you can increase that with the chest piece. You can increase that uh, with watcher's eye. You can just get absolutely insane base crit chance, which means you don't have to invest that much into crit chance in order to get the extra benefit from, for example, poison you inflict with crit deals 25% more damage, uh, going, for example, for perfect agony. So you're always going to be critting. So you're going to be getting so much ailment damage from that. This is going to be very, very powerful. Both the energy blade and the poisonous concoction look like extremely strong skills i don't know if i would start with them but they're definitely going to be great as like a second character and then of course mage blood mage blood the new um where is it the new belt is just absolutely crazy uh where is it where is the mage blood new uniques new uniques where are the new uniques the new belt that basically makes your flasks active all the time it's absolutely crazy it's it's gonna be so strong uh and definitely a lot of people are gonna be trying to get it and then trying to make builds around it uh, personally i have some also like my, my personal favorites that i would also like to try the envy skeleton poison build uh, because they have buffed uh, the sword that gives you envy aura from giving you level 15 to level 25 envy, which means you, you can have like skeletons that do absolutely insane poison damage. Um, so definitely uh, I might try that. Voltaxic uh, burst with Voltaxic Rift, Rift cast on crit has been buffed because they increased like the crit chance or crit damage and some base damage buffs. So it's going to be also another really cool thing to try. Uh, but that's basically it. We'll see uh, more when we have the uh, actual path of building updated because right now all we have to work with is this thing which is like stitched together passive skill tree that we're trying to see uh, how it's gonna work out the only thing I've managed to figure it out figure out from this is that the build I'm trying to start which is gonna be toxic rain uh, champion most likely probably is actually gonna be even stronger because they moved uh, flask nodes from here there was like extra flask nodes here with 10% uh, duration they moved them to here I think so this is gonna be another extra way to get duration because we're getting here already so that's gonna that if we can pick that up that will mean like 40 second duration on my flasks which means we get soul eater for 40 seconds while mapping and while doing scourge is gonna be perfect because we're gonna basically able to have permanent soul eater while we are in the scourge mechanic which is just absolutely crazy so i think toxic Rain champion is going to be very strong but so is going to be like ed contagion physical minions probably still sst bleed with corrupting fever and many other builds armageddon brand could be also really good uh, but yeah let me know guys what do you think you're going to be starting in the new league which builds do you think are looking really good and if i forgot any of the potential good starters or aspirational builds that people can be going for thank you guys for watching and see you next time